So I want to take my goal skills to the next level. That would require me to build something truly advanced, something that I'd actually never built before. This is definitely not a to-do application. This is definitely not an API. Something that would require me to use all of the advanced concepts in Golang. Things like Go Routines, Go Concurrency Model, Mutex, Go Sync Library, and the likes. Um, I think I'm going to be building a video streaming application. That has caught my fancy lately, and I'd really never done anything in that area. I think we're going to be building a Zoom clone. Yeah, Zoom clone, catch me. So, let's get into our design call. This is a design call. We're having a design meeting. We're trying to build a startup here. This is our startup. Do you get what I'm saying? We're trying to build a SaaS application, a video streaming application. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, let's get into a design call, and let us design our video streaming application by the way what's the name we're going to give this video streaming application um i think we should call it uh man naming is truly difficult uh, you know for now just forget about it forget forget about the naming we're going to leave the naming aside so for our mvp for our mvp features our core important features for now are these two one and two is video calls right so our video streaming application must have a video call functionality and it must also have a messaging functionality um if we have enough time we can add groups we can add groups and obviously groups is also going to have um, group video call and, and we're also going to have something like group messaging functionality. We're going to do that if we have enough time. Um, that is that about our MVP this thing. Now let us, let's talk about our technologies, the technologies we're going to be using for this. I, I'm not a fan of I know that there are libraries that helps you that helps you with abstraction all right but in this channel we don't like to use um, libraries that take away the knowledge of the technology we ought to know all right we like to truly understand how the technology works even if we're going to use the libraries all right we want to understand how the underlying technology works so so for our um, clone uh, we're going to call it streamify streamify that's the name so for streamify we are going to be using two technologies to achieve these two guys all right we're going to be using two technologies we're going to be using um, web rtc web rtc so we are going call all right we're going call we are not we are not using um we are not using a library to <laughs> that has abstracted everything no we want to understand how the underlying technology works all right so we're not using socket.io i don't i don't want that we're using web rtc and web rtc is going to be is going to is what we're going to use to implement the video call feature video call video call feature and we are also going to use um can you i hope you can see this we're also going to use web sockets we're going to use web sockets and web socket is going to help us achieve messaging yep so i know you're going to be asking since um web socket is used for real-time communication is used for real-time communication and web rtc is also used for real-time communication why not just pick one of them and use why use both of them i'm going to explain to you just calm down all right every technology that was built was built for a purpose Do you get what i'm saying they were built for a purpose so you have to understand the purpose of each technology so you can know where to use them 
and where not to use them because each of them have a specific functionality a specific problem that they tackle and they tackle well and they also have a trade-off so you need to know their area of strength and you also need to know their trade-off and that's the case for web rtc and web socket so I'll, I'll explain to you very now web rtc is basically a javascript api that allows peer-to-peer -peer, um, exchange of information in real time so let's say you have you have a computer here yeah? all right and you have another computer here yeah? web rtc so we can this is our peer this is another peer web rtc is able to allow these two computer to communicate web rtc to communicate without the influence of any server without communicating to any server all right and this is the reason why WebRTC is used for majorly for video, for video and audio streaming. Because I mean, if you're not communicating with the server, it drops down the latency very drastically, and it makes communication very fast. And that's what you need for video and streaming streaming application. You need a technology that is able to that is able to communicate very fast with very little minimal latency because you're going to notice if you get on a whatsapp call with your friend and you start to see a little bit of glitch you're going to notice the slightest glitch and that is the reason why we are going to be using web rtc for our video application now let me explain why we can't use web sockets and why we're going to be using web sockets for messaging now, in the case of WebSockets, all right, WebSockets also allows communication between, between two clients. However, WebSockets does this with the use of a server. So WebSocket is not a peer-to-peer -peer communication um, technology, real-time communication technology. WebSocket is a peer-to-server real-time technology so what that means is this particular client cannot communicate to this client directly as in the case of RT, web rtc in web sockets this computer has to establish communication with this server first and then this server exchanges the information down to the other client, and then it goes vice versa the other way around um this causes a little bit of latency although it is very negligible but when it comes to streaming things like video and audio you are going to notice every little latency and that is why we are going to use this for messaging for things like chat applications you're really never going to notice the latency so why don't we just use webrtc for messaging webrtc has its own trade-off um, the reason why WebRT webrtc is so fast is because WebRTC uses what is called UDP protocol for data exchange. Now, UDP is not reliable. UDP is so fast. UDP is very fast. And the reason why UDP is fast is because with UDP, you do not need to check anything. There is nothing like ordering. There is nothing like acknowledgement and the like so udp is so fast and this is why um web rtc uses udp because it uses it for video and audio and udp is not necessarily safe so if you're going to be transferring um a data if you're going to be transferring a set of data that is important or that needs to be saved you cannot do that over udp because udp is not going to acknowledge when data is being delivered it is not going to maintain ordering so that is why when it comes to things like chatting chatting requires that the data be sent and an acknowledgement be made all right that's why you see all of those tick on your whatsapp acknowledgement be made but for video and audio you really are not necessarily bothered 
about missing a little frame because you know that those frames are just they, they might just act as a little glitch but they will still come back at the end of the day so um so i, I hope you understand why we're going to be using these two technologies this is very important for you to understand right we're going to be using WebRTC for video and audio and we're going to be using WebSocket for messaging and then we are going to be using um golang obviously golang is going to be in the center of it all um golang is going to act as our server our server so this is our design meeting i hope you understand how this is going to go all right so let's have like an overall diagram of what we're going to be doing so we're going to be building streamify Marcus are getting really dry. Streamify. And we're going to be using. We have two features. Feature one is video call. Feature two is messaging. And for video call, we're going to be using WebRTC. WebRTC for video call. Video call. This is just technology mapping, all right? And for messaging, we're going to be using WebSockets. For messaging. And as our server, we're going to be using Golang. And there are all that technologies that we're also going to be using. using. We're going to be using something like Docker. We're going to be using Docker. We're going to be using Docker. That's, that's all I think I can think of now so yeah do you want to know the honest truth i do not really know much about web rtc i've really never done it before <laughs> let me just confess now really not done it before i do not know much about web sockets i've not done it before i know just a little about golang and do you know what that means we're going to be learning all of this together all right guys um i'm so pumped up about this um this is gonna be fun and I'm going to be filming all of my process in a part series kind of video. Uh, obviously, because all of this cannot contain a single video. It definitely cannot contain a single video. I'm going to be filming all of the learnings and all of the process in a part series. Let me know which part of this video you're going to enjoy the most. And let's do this together. Remember, we're building a SaaS application, so you need to follow through we need to follow through on this and we need to ship get this application to the market very quickly like very quickly